Nigeria just shocked the world with what they are building. The world's biggest oil refinery. 20 times larger than most American giants. A brand new city rising from the Atlantic, bigger than Central Park. A $10 billion railway stretching farther than the busiest U.S. corridor. Even a hydro dam set to power 20 million homes. It sounds impossible for a country locked in blackouts and battered by floods. Yet these mega projects are real, reshaping Africa's largest economy at breakneck speed. But when billions ride on dreams this big, the risks are just as colossal. Will this infrastructure blitz deliver prosperity or unleash even bigger crises? The answer begins with a brutal oil shock and a single high-stakes decree. Oil prices swing by billions every year in Nigeria, turning government budgets into a gamble. One year, crude exports fund schools and roads. The next, a global slump leaves ministries scrambling to pay salaries. Blackouts are routine. 24-hour outages hit cities and villages alike, forcing families to rely on generators or candles just to keep the lights on. In Lagos, the population surges by nearly half a million people every 12 months packing millions into crowded neighborhoods where floods can wipe out entire blocks overnight. The city's main beach once stood as a buffer, but after a series of devastating storms in the late 2000s, ocean water poured across the Echo Bridge, swallowing businesses and homes in minutes. By 2015, the message was clear. Nigeria couldn't survive on oil alone. The new administration put infrastructure at the top of its agenda, not with a single decree, but through years of budget battles, policy speeches, and public-private deals. The goal? Break the cycle of boom and bust, create reliable energy, and build a foundation for millions of new jobs. Every ministry, from power to transport, was pulled into the effort. For the first time, federal budgets earmarked billions for roads, ports, and power plants, betting that massive construction could turn chaos into opportunity. The risks were enormous, but so was the promise. A future where Nigeria's economy could stand on more than just oil. Aliko Dangote set out to build more than just a refinery. He aimed to flip Nigeria's energy story. On a 25 square kilometer stretch outside Lagos, construction teams broke ground in 2016. Seven years and $19 billion later, the Dangote refinery stands as the world's largest single-site facility with a nameplate capacity of 650,000 barrels per day. That's double the size of the biggest plants in the United States. At full throttle, this complex doesn't just process crude. It produces polypropylene, diesel, gasoline, and jet fuel enough to supply Nigeria and still ship millions of tons abroad. The numbers are staggering. 30,000 jobs created, $3 billion a year saved by slashing fuel imports and 10 billion in new export revenue. Chinese banks backed key loan tranches, while the Nigerian National Petroleum Company and a Frexim bank helped secure crude supply. Dangote's team negotiated everything from sovereign guarantees to customs fast tracks, making sure the refinery could run at scale. By late 2023, the plant had started up, pushing out refined products for both the local market and international buyers. For Nigeria, this means more than just fuel. It's a shot at energy independence, a steady revenue stream, and a new role as a heavyweight in global trade. Next, the focus shifts to urban innovation on the Atlantic coast. Echo Atlantic City rises from the sea, carved out of 10 square kilometers of reclaimed land along the battered coast of Lagos. Engineers call its 8.5 kilometer seawall the Great Wall of Lagos, a barrier built to stand against 100 year storms and protect $15 billion worth of property from the next Atlantic surge. This isn't just a flood defense. It's a blueprint for a new city, with room for a quarter of a million residents and a skyline meant to rival Dubai's. The price tag? $6 billion, funded by a mix of state partnerships and international investors betting that climate resilience can drive urban growth. Just down the shoreline, the Lekki Deep Seaport is rewriting Nigeria's trade map, with a 1.5-kilometer key and five berths. 
it's the first port in the country deep enough for the world's largest container ships, capable of handling 2 million TEUs per year. In early 2023, crews pulled off a feat that turned heads across the shipping world. A 105-meter ship-to-shore crane was installed in a single overnight operation, using digital wind sensors and precision rigging to beat the Atlantic gusts. $4 billion in foreign direct investment fueled the build. And now, for the first time, Nigeria's exports can bypass congested regional ports and head straight to global markets. Each container that leaves Leki signals a new era, one where Nigeria isn't just defending its shoreline, but stepping up as West Africa's logistics powerhouse. Steel rails cut through the heart of Nigeria, linking Abuja to Kano with more than a thousand kilometers of new track. Built by Chinese contractors and backed by a $10 billion budget, this standard gauge railway promises to slash travel time between the capital and the north to just 12 hours. Trains run at 120 kilometers per hour, fast enough to move crops, goods, and people across the country in a single day. Along the Leki, Epe Corridor, a 50-kilometer highway rebuild and a 27-kilometer light rail are reshaping daily life for millions. Commute times have already dropped by 40% for some, while logistics costs along the corridor are projected to fall by a quarter once the network is complete. But the price of progress is written in eviction notices and court filings. In towns like Kubwa and Zaria, villagers watched bulldozers clear homes for the right of way, some receiving compensation, others left fighting for fair value in court. Lagos communities along Leki, Ipe have staged protests and filed lawsuits, challenging the government's claims about job creation and compensation. Some residents say they were given as little as 72 hours notice before demolition crews arrived. The Nigerian Railway Corporation insists that all affected families will be paid, but delays and disputes keep piling up. For every promise of faster travel and new opportunity, there's a family waiting for answers and a city grappling with what it means to build for the future while honoring those left behind. High on the Mambila Plateau, bulldozers and excavators have carved out more than 80% of the dam site for what could become Nigeria's largest source of renewable energy. The Mambila Hydroelectric Power Project is designed to deliver 3,050 megawatts, enough to power 20 million homes and unlock $8 billion a year in new industrial growth. Engineers on site describe the scale as unprecedented, with a reservoir planned to cover hundreds of square kilometers and turbines sourced from Japan and Europe. But every advance comes with pushback. In Gembu, hundreds of residents have marched through the streets, demanding answers about forced relocations and broken promises. Lawsuits from local landowners and advocacy groups are still pending in Abuja's federal courts, challenging the government's compensation plans and the environmental review process. Conservationists warn that the dam's reservoir will submerge peatlands and forests, releasing carbon and threatening species found nowhere else in West Africa. Security units have been deployed to keep construction moving, while NGOs document petitions and community meetings that call for a halt until fair agreements are reached. Government officials argue that the project is essential for economic survival and climate resilience. But activists and hydro engineers on the ground say the real test is whether Nigeria can deliver clean power without repeating the mistakes of the past. The stakes are now set. Renewable energy for a nation, or irreversible loss for those who call the plateau home. Nigeria stands at a crossroads, with the fate of its mega-projects hanging in the balance. If these builds deliver as promised, the country could finally break free from the boom and bust cycles that have defined its past. Reliable power from Mambila could light up 20 million homes, and the refinery's output might turn Nigeria into a net exporter, feeding a new middle class and drawing global investment. The deep sea port and railway could knit together distant regions, making local tomatoes as likely to reach Europe as Lagos. For some, these projects offer the first real hope of stable jobs and safer cities, a future where families no longer fear the next blackout or flood. But the risks are as real as the ambitions. 
if debt piles up faster than growth, or if compensation disputes and environmental damage spiral out of control, these same builds could become monuments to broken promises. Displaced families in Lagos and Gembu may never return home. Forests and peatlands could vanish beneath rising water, while courtrooms fill with lawsuits and protests. The question now is whether Nigeria's boldest projects will unite the country around shared prosperity or deepen the divides that still linger beneath the surface. By November 2023, the Dangote refinery began production at a scale of 650,000 barrels per day, instantly ranking among the largest refineries worldwide. Alongside Echo Atlantic's 10 square kilometers of reclaimed land, Lakey Port's 105-meter gantry crane and a 1,100-kilometer rail line connecting Abuja and Kano, Nigeria's mega-builds mark a dramatic shift from decades of stalled ambition. These projects promise $10 billion in annual exports, 120,000 new jobs, and a 25% drop in logistics costs. Numbers taken from official project documents and trade reports. Yet, the future is not settled. Environmental risks, unresolved compensation claims, and delays, like the ongoing land disputes on the Abuja Kano Railway, remain. Some project details, such as the full impact of the Mambia Hydropower Dam, are still under review. What is clear? Nigeria's infrastructure drive is reshaping its economy and regional influence in real time. Whether these builds deliver lasting change or become cautionary tales will be determined by the facts that emerge in the years ahead.